Linear bearings are one of the most common components you're going to find in a 3D printer. Amongst those, the most common is the LM8UU bearing. These bearings are designed to slide up and down your smooth rods, and the inside of them contain little round, well, bearing balls that are arranged so that they run up and down the rod and create a low friction surface. Now, the less common replacement for those would be a bushing. These bushings don't have moving parts inside and are instead designed out of a plastic that should be relatively low friction and requires little to no lubrication. Now if you check out Thingiverse, you're going to find all sorts of printed designs or printable designs for bushings that you can use to replace the bearings in your printer. And this got me thinking, how difficult are these to design? Because if you have the ability to design your own, you can integrate them into your projects. So we're going to walk through that today and you're going to find the process is actually a lot simpler than you might think. So let's start off with a Fusion 360 window. This is a fresh one, there's absolutely no design work done, and uh, we're going to need some information from that wiki page we had open earlier. Now on the wiki page you can see that an LM8UU bearing has an 8mm internal diameter, a 15mm external diameter, and a length of 24mm. Those numbers are going to be important for our design. So let's jump back in the Fusion 360 and we'll create a circle by pressing C. When you press C it's going to ask you which plane you want to design on. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. So we'll start off from the center and we'll do 15 millimeters. This represents the outside of our bearing, or bushing in this case. Then on the inside we'll create another circle and this one will be 8 millimeters. Then we can go ahead and select the face that we've just created and do a press pull, make it 24 millimeters. And there's the basic design done. Pretty simple, right? Well, we're not quite done yet. You see, a good bushing is going to have minimal contact with the actual rod. So you want it to have enough contact that it doesn't have a lot of play in it, but not so much that it slows down or makes the bushing difficult to move. So let's start off by adding a chamfer to our inner edges. So we can go modify, chamfer, select the inner surface of our bushing, and we'll add a, let's say, 1.5 millimeter chamfer. This will allow you to print the bushing and not have to worry about any of the uh, sort of elephant foot, which would create one end that's sort of smaller than the other, and uh, it'll just generally make it easier to get the rod into the hole. So we can do that to one side, and then we'll just go ahead, rotate it around, and repeat the process on the other side. So what's next? Well, like I was saying earlier, the goal for this is to have as minimal contact with the rod as possible while still staying straight. So right now this has full contact with the bar all the way across because it's just a cylinder. So what we can do is we can go to our sketch option and we can select an ellipses. We'll go ahead and select the face of our bushing and uh, start about here and drag up. So the way an ellipses works is the first thing you do is show how far into the design you want to cut and then the second is to stretch it to the side and this will allow you to create the nature of the cut. So I think somewhere on there is probably going to be good. Now to create the second cutoff I'm going to go ahead and create my 8 millimeter circle again and this should give me a face that I can then drag to cut into our bushing. So we'll do a press and pull and we can just do 24 millimeters to cut all the way through. Okay well that's one part done but that doesn't give the entire bushing the design we want. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a pattern and in this case we're going to select a circular pattern. So the first thing it'll ask us to do is select the object and we can go ahead and select the face that we just created and we're creating a circular one so we can go ahead and select the 8 millimeter internal circle here and you'll see by default it's going to generate three. This is where you're going to want to play with it because depending on the ellipses that you've created you want to make sure that there's enough left to give surface contact to the rod but not so much that uh, you're slowing things down. So we'll go ahead and select through there and you can see it's created these and uh, it's just about 50% there. I think I'm going to go one more. So we'll do 9 instead of 8 and press enter and well there we go. That's pretty quick and painless. 
Now, the other thing we need to build into our bushing is tolerances. If we print this as is, the internal diameter is going to be you know, around 8 millimeters. On most printers, it's probably going to be a little bit smaller. So if you get the rod in there, it's not going to slide real easy. I've learned with my printers that usually a tolerance of 0.15 is enough to sort of get the rod in there, but you probably want a little bit more than that to get it free moving. And the goal here is to get it moving enough that it slides easy, but not so much that it has play in it, which is going to go into your prints. So I like to start off with my 8mm bushing, and I right click on it, and I do a move copy, and from here I can say, oh, I want to move the body, select the bushing, then check off create copy, and then just drag it over. So now I've got my known good one on the left, and the one we're going to manipulate on the right. So go ahead and zoom in on the one we're going to manipulate, and I'll press C to create a circle. And I'm just going to go out, I want to do, let's say, 8.15. Then we'll select that, do a press pull, and we'll go ahead and do a minus 25 to cut through the bushing. So now we have one bushing that has a tolerances of 0.15. Now these don't take a lot of filament to print, so it doesn't really hurt to design a bunch of them in one shot and print them and see which one's going to work for you. So we can just repeat the process of right-clicking, doing a move copy, selecting body, picking the body we want to move, create another copy, drag it off to the side, and this time we'll create a circle that is 8.17. So what I'm going to do is repeat this process over and over again. I'm going to go all the way up to, say, 8.25, and I'll print them all off, and I'll see which one works best for me, and then I can use that for future designs. And here we have a standard LM8 UU bearing. So this is just your, well, the standard one you'd find in most 3D printers. And as you can see, uh, it slides pretty easily on here. Uh, most of these will be self-lubricating. The little ball bearings inside are going to have uh, lubricant already applied. So it'll actually get a little bit easier as you slide it up and down the rail. You can see it's, you know, it's, it's a little noisy. You get a bunch of these working together and it is going to generate some noise. And here are the many iterations that I've gone through to try and get the perfect fit for my 3D printed bushings. See, the trick here is that you want them to be a little bit tight when you start off, but you don't want them binding up anywhere. Um, so we've got different passes. This one, definitely too tight. Not going to get any movement out of that. Then I changed up the design a little bit. And this one here, it's pretty close to perfect. You got a little, a little play in it. So the trick is when you first put it on, you want it to be a little bit tight because it is going to get worn in um, the majority at the beginning and then it'll sort of even out. Those layer lines and any of the imperfections in the print will come off fairly quickly and you'll get a much smoother running bearing. This is a 45 millimeter version of a uh, 3D printed element UU and this one's pretty much where you want it. You want it so that when you change directions, it doesn't bind up, but there's really no play in that whatsoever. If you print one off and it's just a little too tight, what you can do is take an 8 millimeter uh, threaded rod and you can just slide it through the inside. This will take off any of the burrs and it'll sort of smooth things out a little bit. It's not going to work miracles for you. If you've got something that's completely bound up, this isn't the way to go. You're better off adjusting uh, your print settings and printing it again. But if you've got one that just needs a little more convincing, then you can just smooth out the inside using a smooth rod. So why would you want to do this? Well, as you can see, these are a lot quieter. I mean, a lot. There's vir virtually no sound whatsoever. They're cheap. These cost somewhere between 8 and 12 cents to print. And uh, as you can see, I can adjust the model to print 
whatever length I want. So while the standard ones are 25 and 45 millimeters, you can go with whatever size you need for your print. So these particular ones were printed in marble PLA, which is what's giving it that sort of nice little, uh, the little black dots of texture in there. And uh, I'm really happy with the way they're turning out. So it is worth spending the extra time to print different versions, see what size you want to get them to. Um, they're not expensive to print. They're a fairly quick print. Um, if you're trying to figure out the tolerances, start with the smaller ones, because obviously faster to print. Then you can scale it up if you need a bigger one. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know if you've had any success uh, printing these yourself, which materials you've used. So far I've used uh, PLA and PETG. The PETG seems to stick a little bit uh, a little bit more, maybe need a little more lubrication, but I think they'll probably stand up longer in the long run. Alrighty guys, well I hope you found this uh, helpful. If you did, then toss me a thumbs up. If you didn't, then you can go ahead and thumbs down, but at least let me know in the comments what I can do to improve. And until next time, stay creative.